So I've had enough time with the Framework Desktop now to talk a little bit about it. If you're planning on getting one or thinking about getting one, this video is probably going to be helpful to give you an idea of the type of performance you can actually get and how I'm starting to think about it. So my original objective with this was to be able to run AI coding models. So anything that, and I didn't care how long it took, just let it be slow, let it kind of grind away. I've sort of given up on the ability to be able to run this with like an agentic workflow. In fact, the prompt processing time is just too long, in my opinion, to make that meaningful. In fact, some of the actual tools actually time out because of how long they take. So I've taken a different approach. Hopefully you find this interesting. Just a quick recap here. I do have the AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 with the full memory, 128 gigabytes on it. I did actually add some uh, like four terabytes of storage. I can download a bunch of models. The one thing I'm very interested in is what is we going to do with this MPU? I have not looked at that at all. It doesn't seem like there's much I can actually do with that yet. So my objective, best model I can run with 10 TPS or more. The problem that I started running into was that it needs to most likely be a mixture of expert model, not a dense model. The difference between that is a dense model is everything gets activated. So for example, a 36 billion parameter model with the uh, ByteDance seed model, I only get like five TPS with that on the framework desktop. I only get like 33 on my uh, RTX 5090. Whereas some of the mixture of expert models, I can get 30, 40, maybe even 50 TPS at lower context. So I know that we need to do an MOE model and let's talk a little bit about the options here. So GLM 4.5 Air, and in particular, you can kind of see the size here. The one that I ended up going with is the G4 underscore K underscore XL. So I went the 73 gigabyte one. And I can typically get about 14 to 17 TPS. And I'm going to be honest with you, it starts at about 17 TPS and it just kind of goes down slowly as the context gets to, you know, you might end up getting 9, 10, 11. So just to kind of keep that in mind that the further you get into that context, the worse it's going to actually perform. Prompt processing is a problem. So let's say you give this thing 20,000 20, tokens, like an entire couple files or whatever that it's actually going through. It can take a bit of time. So the system prompt for things like root code or open code um, are actually pretty intensive there. Whereas we have Klein with that pr condensed prompt that actually helps a lot with that, but it still doesn't fix the fact that running through these agentic loops is just so t like costly. It's so time consuming. I think we have to change the way we think about coding and I'll show you what I've been working on on the side here. There's also Quinn 3 Coder 30 billion with 1 million contacts. I actually was pretty excited about this. But the fact of the matter is this model is just not smart enough to be my only coding model and having it run in an agentic workflow felt like it was gimping me a little bit. I do love the 1 million context. It's got a small memory footprint. I can load a lot. I could get pretty far into that context window if I wanted to, but you know, I, I kind of want a model that can design and actually do some things without me having to instruct every little thing that it wants to do. Uh, but if you do have work that you want to do where you're just kind of saying like, hey, go do this particular thing, this model might actually be a good one. Because look at the TPS you get, 30s, you know, it's not bad. It actually performs really well. And that goes because of the mixture of experts that it has there. I then thought about DeepSeek V3.1. So I wanted to look at how small the the one bit, the IQ1 underscore S is. It's still way too massive. Um, I assumed it was going to be, but I just wanted to poke at that to see, because this is a good MOE model. In fact, I would say um, if you could run a mixture of expert model and you had enough room to actually run these even at a Q2, I would love to know how that performs with you because it's just beyond my capabilities right now. Then GPT OSS 120B, I actually get between 30 and 35 TPS on this as well. You can see the size here is 63.39, can load the full context up just fine. The speed is good. It's just unfortunately... I just haven't had a lot of luck with it actually coding very well for me. Um, I have heard from people that said they do get a good job. They do have it actually code for them pretty well. I want to spend some more time with this model, but I think I could do better. So I started looking even further and I found Quinn 3, 230B, A22B, 12 TPS to 20 TPS. And I ended up going with the Q2 underscore K underscore XL, loading it in at about 50K context and getting that to fully run on my framework desktop. Now to show you this, what I'm used to doing 
is loading it up in Jan AI. So like what I found is I, I basically would copy in a bunch of code and then get some feedback on it and give it to me and I copy it out. But I got to thinking, that's really not a convenient way to do this. So I started playing around with this idea of a new application and I built this. This is what I'm calling the local code editor. Uh, it is not perfect by any means whatsoever, but I want to talk about some of the features that I'm, I'm thinking about here. The first one, and here, actually, I have a screenshot here. So let me pull up something real quick, because this is actually very interesting. Uh, so here's an example of a diff view. So basically, I said, hey, remove the comments from this file. It ran through. You know, you notice I'm using Quinn 3. Let me zoom in a little bit. Quinn 3, 235B, A22B, Instruct 2507. And it basically generates a new version of the file. I automatically create the diff on it if I can. And then you could just hit that button, Apply and it will write to the file perfectly for you. So you open it with the open uh, folder button here. So yeah, so let's start here with the open folder. So first off, over here on the sidebar, you can see all of the different things that you can include in context. Down here, I actually have the context being shown, like what files are being included. It tells you what size it is. If I hit open folder and I pick a different one, so I could just say, hey, I'm just gonna do, let's go grab, um, I don't know, maybe my, uh, let's grab a codex one. My my tree changes just fine. I do have the ability to add different modes. I'm working through what the actual system prompts are because I don't think that's perfect yet. But notice what I did here. I said, can you give me three things that could be improved in this file? It gave me three things. I then said, I actually mistyped it. I said pound sign um, exclamation mark there, which is kind of annoying that I did that. But regardless, it picked up what I wanted. Now here... It actually tried to put it in the wrong place. So this is sort of a problem that I'm working through. That doesn't happen all the time, but um, I need to I need to try to figure that out. So I can look at the raw view if I want to here to kind of see what's happened. The other thing that I would just kind of call out is I'm trying to get the AI to not return partial bits of code. Like you can see here, it's got the rest of the component. I'm trying to get it to always return all the code. And it listens to that some of the times, but not all of the times. So let me show you some of the configuration that you can do here. So here I have it set up. It's pointing to my server here. I have my max context window set to 60,000. I have presets for Llama, VLLM, and LM Studio. And if I go ahead and hit new chat, I don't have like a chat history or anything. This is still kind of like in a really big prototype uh, phase. Uh, I'm just going to show you kind of the experience of why I think this might be uh, something worth pursuing. I'm not totally sure yet, but if... If, I, if I'm right about this, I think because local coding is just so much slower, what we really need is, even if this was built into an IDE extension, or it doesn't even have to be this application, but I think we need a way to just add context and then very quickly apply it to our code base. So let's just take a very small file, confirm modal. I know that's a really tiny one, and I'm just going to ask it a question. Okay, so I took that file and I said, hey, I want you to take this and restyle it so it looks more modern. Do the very best you can. Let me check real quick. It looks like we have a very small amount of tokens in our prompt. And actually, I have a uh, token kind of estimator over here in the bottom right. It says about 840 tokens. And looking at the LM Studio side, it's pretty pretty aligned. In all, it was about 945 tokens that actually happened, including the message that I ended up putting in there. So you can see here, it's actually giving me the file back. This actually shouldn't take too long. It's getting 14, you know, 12, 13, 14, 15 tokens per second. And I'm running the Quinn 3, 235B model. Like, isn't this insane, like, to be actually run this on a computer that's, like, this big? Like, it's a little tiny machine. And no, it's not going to perform as well as, like, a full Q8 version of it. But it's still pretty exciting that I'm able to do this. Because with a tool like this, I actually feel... Like I could kick these things off and let it run. All right, so I have this. I don't know what this is gonna look like, but let me just show you what it looks like. So I'm gonna hit apply. It's gonna show written. So I'm gonna pull up my code base here and pull it over and let's just see if it actually wrote it. So here's my confirm modal and there's the diff completely applied to it. So this one worked great. It didn't do any placeholders. And if you do want just the raw file, I think about adding like a copy button or something in here and maybe getting this style a little bit more, a uh, little bit better. But I really, I don't know why I'm so excited about this sort of like experiment here. And I think I found like a 
kind of a cool model that I want to do a little bit of testing with because I have a, I think, pretty good luck, like actually getting some stuff out of this model that's a bit more usable, especially like bug, like tracking down bugs or whatnot. Because what I'm thinking is over time, what I can do is make this where you can create custom modes. And the only tool that you really have in here is the diff tool or the, it's really the code tool. And I auto do the diff kind of creation there. And I will say the one issue that I run into is the file pass and all that, all the normal stuff that you kind of run into and just know like out the gate that you really are going to be looking at MOE models, not dense models. I had this really hope, like big hope that I could get 10 or 11 TPS from any dense model. And I just cannot, like, I can't do that. I, I'm hoping we get an MOE model from Quinn. That's uh, like a 70B, ideally 120B. Man, that would be freaking awesome if we could get one that's a little bit better. Anyway, I think that's going to call it for this one. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, appreciate you all. Peace out.